Okay guys, this is a continuation of my last videos, and I may move all these over to the website and put them more in class form, because they really need to be seen together. So, let's go back to it here. And I want you to think of you, like this is you, this is you, and I've done this analogy before, but I want you to think of the you that's inside of you, that is the employee you, maybe the parent you, or the child you from your childhood. Now, you would not pull these, the child part of you, and be that part of you while you were at work, right? And you would not pull the employee part of you while you were being a child or playing with your children or playing with children, period, you know? Okay, so there's different aspects of you that are within you that you pull on depending upon what you're doing during the day, right? That's no big deal, okay? So... I want you to think of that when you're thinking of source. This is source, and this is different aspects of source. And this is me, this is you, and this is the other. The difference is that in this, this play with source is that you and I and the other, we can come together and we can play together doing stuff, right? That's what we can do. But I want you to think of it very much like different aspects of yourself. Okay. Now we went down yesterday where we had you all divided into all the different aspects of you. And <clears throat> I think you kind of got an idea of how big you are. Now, let's go into this. And here's source. And here's you. And we're going to step right outside. Even though all of this is in um, within source, everything's within source. But we're going to pull it out separately just so you can look at it. And we're going to bring out you. And at this point where you realize or put together different parts of source to create the entity that you consider you. Right here, this first knowingness that you are separate from source, that creationary uh, process, so to speak, this you, this is your highest self. Okay? That is your highest self. Now, as you come down and you take parts of yourself and you go over here and you start a game and another part of you goes over here and plays a game with others. So you're with others. And then over here, you're watching a game. And then a part of you decided to come to earth okay this is just one part of you that decided to come to earth well knowing what the process is of going to earth and how you were going to have to do this and get down into physical then what happened is right here now you've got another higher self not the highest but a higher self in this higher self is going to watch over all the other aspects of you as you make this process in this game going down to earth. So you first stepped into the game. Everybody steps into the game. And as you guys know, the first thing that the creator of this game did was it split everything, created duality. Created duality. This is the duality game. And in that duality game, we also have amnesia. 
Because in the duality game, a game within the game, is this desire to play in physical form, physical form, as a non-god, non-god. That's part of the game in duality. Once it was up and rocking and rolling, okay? So let's go ahead and erase that because I need space. All right, I'm going to erase all of this. Now you know this, okay? You came out of source. Here's your highest self. I need more room, so I'm going to write this differently. So bear with me. Okay. So we've got up here your highest self. And underneath the highest self is one of your higher selves. Gonna keep an eye on things. As you start playing this dualistic game. And this higher self takes its energy and you enter this creation. We're gonna call it the duality game. That's what we're gonna call it. The duality game. So you're gonna enter the duality game. In order to enter the duality game, you have to take your, who you are, and you've got to divide it into two. Okay? Now this has now become two. Because you have to have aspects, you're going to have aspects in both sides of the duality game. And this is, we'll call light. And this we'll call dark. Even though neither one of those is better than the other, light is not better than dark at all. Now, over the course of a lot, a lot of, of things, you're going to split and 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 split this aspect of you, which is only part of who you really are. Because remember, up here, you're over there creating a game. Over here, you're watching games, and this is a lot of that is going on. And you still know this higher self is still connected to your highest self doing all those other things. And your highest self is still connected with source. Everything is in everything else, like an atom's in a molecule, molecule's in a part of a cell, part of a cell is in your finger, your finger's a part of your hand, your hand's a part of the body, you get the picture. Okay, all of this stuff is within source. All right, so you're going to split and split and split. And all of this splitting over and over and over again of this is what gets you down to. All of this is lowering vibrations every time, every time, every time, over and over, over and over again. Okay, over and over again. You're going to get down to this. And eventually, you're going to get down to, you did this very rapidly when you came in. All you star seeds, you did this process very rapidly. I went screaming down through this very, very quickly. And, of course, there are all of these things, and I imagine people would probably call this, oh, I don't know, 20 dimension, 19 dimension, <laughs> 18 dimension, whatever it is they want to call it in this process to get down to the fifth dimension, which you did come down through, by the way, you did come down through all of that to the, you went all the way down into the third dimension. Now, long-term humans, now we're going to say this line right here is just a whole bunch of these, a whole bunch of these. And now you're down into the third dimension. You went all the way down into the third dimension. This process of doing this by a long-term human, they take the equivalent of, of oh, hundreds of millions of human lifetimes to do this process because they're interested in all of it, how this fractals down, how this division of duality happens, how that light and dark creates contrast, it creates issues. Now, what you're going to do is when you get, when you start doing this over and over and over again, the reason why, 
<laughs> is because you need to get down to where you can create physical form. Okay. Physical form is created with resistance, no matter where you are in the, the in source. It is a form of resistance. Now, it may not be the kind of resistance that you're used to, but it'll be some form of resistance that creates physicality. When you go down to 3D, this physicality is very, very dense. The vibrations are very, very slow. Very, very slow. So in order to get you from here all the way down in the third dimension, you fractal yourself down in all of these ways. Long-term humans have done it so many times that they're so good at it that when you get to the third dimension, they have truly infinite aspects of themselves. You will have, if you were to look at it, you would think, a starseed would think that they had infinite. It's, it's such a big number that it's not worth arguing over the fact that they have infinite and you do not. But just, just understand that the numbers are huge and the long-term humans are even more. Whenever I've told you that I came in with like five emotions, emotions are a way to move throughout the resistance, so to speak, to create the timelines that we talk about, okay? So they have more options than a starseed does because of practice, because of practice. So they fractal down more. The reason why they use the tunnel is not a bad thing. It's a very good thing because a long-term human does not. They want to cut. They want to build on these fractals down in 3D. That infinite number of options, aspects of them, and options that they have. The reason why they have those is because they have gone through that tunnel and came right back, and so they were able to build on those. Uh, fractals rather than be sidetracked into remembering who they are and going up and then having to, to come back through all of this with every death which is happens very quickly when you look at things 80 years is not that long and all deaths I mean all lives don't last 80 years so rather than being sidetracked with going all the way up and then coming all the way back or even part of the way they go through the tunnel of reincarnation and build on these fractals and by building on those fractals they have infinite options infinite aspects of themselves to choose from so when a star seed comes down and they have little very very few lifetimes then they have far less fractals to choose from when it comes to creating uh, their linear time experience but that was done on purpose because Gaia you're on Gaia and Gaia asked a starseed to come so that we can help her raise. Well, as a starseed, you don't have as many options in the third dimension. You still hang on to a great many of up here. And you're more attached to this higher self and the highest self. And the way that you know that is whenever I do a video and you go, oh, yeah, I know that. And a long-term human, I talk to them and they are clueless. Well, that is the reason, is because they have filled up their aspects with infinite options of down here in the third dimension, third dimensional earth. That was the goal. And it took a lot of this to get down to what you can count there to infinite options that they can choose from. And the way they're guided over which aspect that they're going to use okay now you've got this point now let me take this off we'll go to a different way of looking at it all right now here is you anyone in the middle that's you and around you just think i've told you this before but think of a giant um, diamond okay and it's this diamond has has prisms all the way around the edges, prisms all the way around, and all the way in and all the way out. Long-term human has these prisms to infinity. And just think this is you, and you can focus on a prism. There's a prism. 
and here's a prism, and here's a prism, and here's a prism. And these prisms are kind of set very close to each other, so they're very much alike, but not completely, not completely alike. There's slight differences between these prisms. And each one of these prisms is an aspect of you, okay? Long-term humans have infinite prisms to choose from. Starseed has less, but there's so many of them, you couldn't even begin to understand how many of them there are. But a starseed has less options. Long-term human has more options because they have built this prism, diamond, so to speak. This is my analogy. It's not the way it is, but my analogy. They built these prisms around them to be, oh, there's a lot more options for them than there is a starseed, okay? Each one of these prisms has an aspect of that person, whether starseed or long-term human. Each one of these has an aspect of that person in them, in them, okay? Now, what happens to create physicality is the being right here, will start collecting these prism moments, these individual now moments that have been put together from source, collecting all of this information um, about what the earth looks like and what we look like and how we act and, and how you respond, that there's gravity on the ground, okay? That this chair is solid, all right? Those are the first prisms that are built, are the rules of the game. The rules of the game that we all come into are that in 3D Earth, that uh, we are born as babies, we grow up, we die, and we leave. That uh, trees grow up and form forests. That animals grow up. That there's a start and a finish. That there is gravity that we walk. That things are solid that we walk on. All of these little details of how this place is set up are the agreed upon rules of the game in Earth as we know it right now. And as, you, as you've known it your whole life. Okay? And those are built on these aspects of these people joining together in collectives. Okay? So, here is you. Or here's me. We'll use me. Here is me. Here's all my aspects of me. There's a bit of me in each and every one of these prisms. Now, I came down here, and based on me and collecting all these prisms, which I did very quickly, instantaneously, from the moment that I decided to come here, and I had these prisms all built, right? Okay. And this was from the higher self yourself above here did this came down here and did this and now I'm this aspect to be in the middle of all these prisms um, guiding it so I'm connected to my higher self right there that higher self and I'm kind of the higher self of all of these aspects of these prisms that are all now times okay so what happened is when I was born with all of these I started picking Okay, I want a prism where I'm an infant and I'm coming out of my mother and being born. So I start collecting these prisms and putting them in linear time space down here. This prism goes right here. That's an aspect of me. Now I'm going to follow it with another now aspect of me. I'll follow by another aspect of me and I'm going to collect from these prisms that are all around me, all around me, that I put into place whenever I was coming here, my higher self did, based on the data of how this game runs, what the rules are, what I agree to in that moment whenever I come into the game. Now I'm going to start collecting these, and I'm going to collect these and put them one right after the other in such a way that it will look like, it will feel like, I am moving through time and space. Okay? 
Got that? And we all do that. We all do this. We all do this every moment of every day. Now, there's some things that are pretty much um, done when you're an infant that other people are taking care of you and you agree that the parent is going to come over and take care of you, right? You agree to that? All right. Each time I pick one of these, and like I said, these are done one million times to one billion-ish. Ish. One million to one billion times per second. That's how fast you do that in order to create the illusion of time-space. That's how it's done. Okay? These have to be done right so that you run that in so that you have the illusion of time-space. Okay? Now, let's say that I folded time. You know, on my trip, I folded time-space. So what I do, did was instead of picking aspects of myself that really went second by second, and I drove the car. I put took an aspect of me that was driving the car at um, 12.30, then pick another aspect that was 12.30 in, and another aspect that was 12.31. Instead of doing that, what I did was I chose an aspect of me that was driving at 12.30, then I turned it over to my physical self and said, okay, run this show. Do the rules, the gravity, the driving, the seeing. Do, it, do all that automatically. I trust you. I trust you. And now I'm going to pick an aspect of me that is an hour down the road. And I'm going to see if I knee jerk or if I freak out or if I accept that fact. And I did. I put it right there. I looked at the clock after I'd done it, and it was an hour later. I saw where I was on the map, and I was an hour into my trip. Okay. Now, long-term humans would never do that. The point in how they've created all this and made it a million to a billion times was to slow down every aspect of linear time-space and the experience of being a non-god, a god in amnesia, in physical form, to the point down to tiniest fraction of a billionth of a second so they could really, really experience it completely and totally, completely and totally experience it, okay? Now, as we go higher, then we're going to lose that billionth of a second. Star seeds will. Star seeds, this will be easier for them than it will for a long-term human. Because a long-term human has forgotten a lot about the higher self because they've been here so long. That was the point. The point was to forget where they came from and to focus on all of their energy on their infinite options of creating or going to, putting together these different aspects of self that already exist out here, because they already existed. They created all these infinite options. And now from in here, that form of higher self is putting it together in a linear time space way. Okay? Now, the difficulty lies in that in this infinite aspects of you, you aren't the only one putting together a linear time experience for you. There's many of them, many of yous, many of yous, like I said in one of the other videos. Now that you know that all of this exists, the point here, in my point, is always how do you raise vibrations? How do you go to 5D? Okay. 
Well, first you have to totally understand and believe, figure out that this is the reason why you cannot judge anyone. Okay? Because in this process of now being in physical down here with all of these prisms, with all of these options, with all of these U's running different linear times at the same time. Now the, the, what you have to do is you have to start collapsing this. That's what you're going to start collapsing. However you do that is, is not a big deal. Now you can't do anything from this higher self, the higher self that you are, about what you create and the aspects of the prism that you put together to create your linear time experience. You can only deal with this one. But as you collapse your times, and you will, you do, so that you spend more and more time in the now, and less and less time, so to speak, worrying about the future or complaining and, and being guilty about the past. The more that you stop doing the past-future thing, and the more you spend time in the now, the more these prisms will collapse because you're not giving energy to them. So your big energy, this, this prism around you, like that has all those prisms, you will start collapsing those by not using them. Okay? And the goal here is to get to 5D, is that you're going to make this less and less prisms and what you won't know but it's already happened or you wouldn't be in 4D with me is that you have already collapsed a lot of other U's into the U that you are now and if you were to stop and think about it between now and 2012 if you were to really look at you really look at you from all perspectives, you would know that you are significantly different. That somehow things are different. That you uh, would probably use terms like, if you could see this, you would use terms like, I don't know, I feel more whole. Um, I get along with other people. I'm more at ease uh, around other people. And yet at the same time, you're going to have feelings of increased restlessness. The reason for that is because you felt the collapse of all of these aspects of you, and there's a lot of them, and they're starting to collapse. They collapse into one another. You don't lose them. They just, they, you know, they aren't separate anymore. Now they're together in, as one, going back to oneness, going back to oneness. And these have collapsed automatically. And the ones that have collapsed, if you're in 4D, is any aspect of you that would go into extreme, extreme fear and despair, they collapsed in. If you are on 4D and you are uh, staying in 4D. Now, these aren't like human things. If you were to all of a sudden have somebody that you lost died in a dramatic way and that kicked you off into severe um despair or dis uh, fear or anger you could recreate that prism like that and drop yourself back down into 3d absolutely you can do that you're a god you can do anything most of you that are talking to me probably won't and even if you do you would feel it instantly like simone uh, zen mommy's talking about that she's feeling these low vibrations and they're making her nauseous which I've talked about that before. Now there's somebody else that's feeling it as well. That being around those low vibrations makes me physically ill. And if they're low enough, it can feel like the person who is interacting with me is literally hitting me, punching me, stabbing me with a knife. At which point most people would do one of two things. Either you get angry because it hurts, at which point this is I'm interacting with somebody. They're punching me with these low vibrations, interacting with me in these low vibrations. So I get angry. In that anger, I lower my vibrations. Now I'm interacting with them. doesn't hurt anymore, but now I'm angry, so I don't feel good because I'm angry. Or if I'm up there, 
they're doing that and I don't want to lower my vibrations, I will back out of the interaction altogether. I'll hang up the phone in the conversation, walk out of the room, whatever, to get away. Okay. So, back to this point at hand. As you collapse these vibrations and you get rid of these prisms, the prisms that you are no longer accessing, that are folding into, not losing, into other aspects of yourself. Other aspects of yourself. So, the vibration of fear and despair is not gone. It's accepted. It's added to as simply a vibration. No skin suit interpretation of said vibration to react to, to knee jerk to, but rather just an accepted vibration of the whole that was taken to this game and put in the game in such a way that when you're in the skin suit and you feel this vibration, you feel extreme despair. Outside of the skin suit, in the all that is in source, it is simply a vibration. No more or less than any other vibration. But it was put into this game to be responded to by you in the skin suit physical form in that way to make you feel a certain way to have a certain experience. In the case of extreme despair or fear, that was the experience that was meant to be experienced, which one cannot have as a God at all. You don't have fear. You certainly don't have despair, ever, as your God self. So this is a very new and unique experience to have, is to feel that vibration set up in a play with all this stuff around you so that you will have the new experience of that vibration that is simply a vibration, but set up in this game from this perspective, in this skin suit, you feel despair. You feel despair. You, you interpret that vibration, which over in source is just a vibration. But in this play set up like this, that vibration gives you an experience of despair, which is brand new. Okay? Now back to the point at hand. As you stop doing what you consider lower vibrational things, all of those things, and they're not used, then they fold into the aspect of you. And that's one less prism or a bunch of prisms that you don't access at your choice anymore. All right? So you're collapsing these fractals of you due to the fact that you're not using those vibrations anymore. Okay? So the more you get out of the past, because of the past, um, unless you can go to the past and only have happy thoughts, which you can do that. You can absolutely use the past for one thing and one thing only, and that is happy memories. If you can find a happy memory in the past and go there without it dragging you to one of the bad emotions, one of the lower vibrations, then absolutely you can do that all you want. If looking into the future, planning the future, gives you only joy, and it's simply a way like watching a movie of, of uh, raising your vibration, then do it all day long. If going back to the past leads to fear, despair, guilt, loss, sadness, don't do it. If thinking about the future brings you fear, not good enough, um, uncertainty, and makes you plan endlessly for the future, then don't do it. Again, your goal is to collapse yourself into a circle of prisms that are all fifth dimensional prisms only. 3D has a lot more prisms than 4D. 4D has a lot more prisms than 5D because you're going up to oneness. Okay? So you want to collapse these options, these emotions, these responses that are all negative and you want to fold those into something higher. And that's how you get to raising your vibration to 5D. 
and I'm going to have to stop because my battery is dead on this. So, uh, huge hugs, and we'll continue this later. I love you guys so much. Bye now.